Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to this course on role of physical medicine and rehabilitation in sports. I am Colonel Dr. Anup Krishnan, and welcome to Week One, Lecture Two, where we will be dealing with the principles of injury prevention in sports. I will be covering this lecture as per the following outline: introduction. We will talk about an injury prevention model. We will talk about an injury causation model. We will talk about something called risk management approach. We will talk about a targeted injury prevention program, and we will conclude with a take-home message. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, very aptly said by Benjamin Franklin in the 1700s. An important role for the sports medicine clinician is to minimize activity-related injury, that is, to improve the benefit-risk ratio associated with physical activity and sports. Sports injury prevention can be characterized as primary. secondary or tertiary primary prevention includes health promotion and injury prevention use of braces guards etc secondary prevention can be defined as the early diagnosis and intervention to remit the development of disability or reduce the risk of reinjury or in other words treatment tertiary prevention is the focus on rehabilitation to reduce and or correct an existing disability attributed to an underlying disease or to put it shortly rehabilitation wilhelm von meschelen in 1992 introduced a very classic conceptual model for research on sports injury prevention they say first identify the magnitude of the problem and describe it in terms of the incidence and the severity of sports injuries for example if you are responsible for a team record all injuries within the squad as well as training and match exposure secondly identify the risk factors and the injury mechanisms that play a part in causing these sports injuries for the clinician this may involve steps to examine the athletes and their training and competition program the third step is to introduce measures that are likely to reduce the future risk and or severity of sports injuries based upon the etiological fractures and injury mechanisms identified in the previous step finally the effect of all these measures must be evaluated by repeating the first step in the research setting preventive programs are best evaluated using a randomized control trial design and for the clinician who is responsible for a team continuous surveillance of the injury patterns within the team will reveal whether changes occur in the injury rate to recapitulate this is the four step sequence of injury prevention establishing the incidence of the injury or the severity of the injury establishing the causes of the injury introducing preventive measures and assessing the effectiveness and then going back to step 1 in a cyclical manner there is a model of injury causation which was given by meowais bar and crosshay now they describe this model 
as per risk factors for injury and the injury mechanisms. They say there are certain intrinsic risk factors for an athlete such as age, gender, body composition, health, physical fitness, anatomy and skill level. If there are some intrinsic risk factors present in an athlete, the athlete becomes a predisposed athlete. There are some extrinsic risk factors which may be present in the environment such as teammates, opponents, referees which constitute the human factors, protective equipment or lack thereof, sports equipment and environment such as weather, snow, ice conditions, floor, turf type, maintenance of the playing field etc. When the predisposed athlete is exposed to an extrinsic risk factor, he becomes a susceptible athlete. If the susceptible athlete is exposed to an inciting event such as a playing situation, opponent or player behavior and something to do with the biomechanical characteristics, this susceptible athlete will get an injury. This is the injury causation model and if you observe it and study it carefully, you will find most sports injuries can be explained by this model. Fine, so we have seen the models. Now, how do we do risk management by applying these prevention models to your team? For clinicians, these conceptual models can be adapted to identify potential causes of injury and to develop a targeted prevention program. The key questions to be asked are, what are the typical injuries? Who is at increased risk? Why and how do these injuries typically occur? What are the steps for a risk management approach? Number one, review of literature to find out what are the typical injury patterns in this sport. We have to develop an injury surveillance program within the team to record injuries and participation data. At the end of the season, we have to do a season analysis such as risk profiling the training and the competition program. We have to perform a periodic medical assessment of all athletes to map current problems and to identify intrinsic risk factors. And we have to develop and initiate a targeted prevention program. How do you do a review of literature? Each sport has its typical injury pattern. And for most sports, there is ample data available in the literature to identify and assess the risks. Please note, injury risk is not just a question of injury frequency. You must also look at the severity of injury. When you have the injury data, this can be illustrated by something called a risk matrix that highlights risks in terms of likelihood and consequences. And it is a very powerful tool for risk assessment. If you look at this qualitative risk matrix in elite soccer, this is for one game. If you plot severity versus likelihood, look at sudden cardiac death. It is a catastrophic event, but the likelihood is rare. 
if you look at acl injuries in female the likelihood is almost certain and the severity is severe if you look at hamstring injuries hamstring strains in male severity is major likelihood is moderate what i mean to say is we want to be somewhere in the white areas rather than in the more pink areas of the qualitative risk matrix and once we plot and we are able to find out this risk matrix for our sport it is very easy for us to do predictive analysis and to implement preventive strategies once we have used the risk matrix we can use it to develop an injury surveillance program we have to monitor injuries and exposure to assess risk within your own team please maintain accurate records of all injuries and all assessments and treatments provided to your athletes record the individual training and competition exposure within the team and this exposure data is necessary to calculate risk injury incidence is the number of time loss injuries per 1000 hours of exposure we must record the exposure in relation to the existing risk factors such as the turf type use of personal protective equipment and whether the exposure is during competition or training a limitation within the standard methods for injury registration is that they substantially underestimate the true burden of overuse injuries due to their relying on time loss injury definitions only as we know overuse problems do not lead to a time loss from sports and they are generally not recorded in your standard injury surveillance systems to address this limitation clarsen et al developed the oslo sports trauma research center questionnaire on health problems for prospective monitoring of all illness and injuries and not just those leading to time loss from sports participation the ostrek questionnaire is very important and should be administered to all athletes in your team season analysis the season analysis represents an attempt to identify risks before they occur the program risks are related to the competition schedule the training program the recovery of the athlete travel and other issues the risk of injuries is greater during transition periods and each stage has certain characteristics that may increase risk the season analysis risk profiling is usually done by the medical personnel in collaboration with the coaches and athletes it's an important basis for planning preventive measures and particularly to avoid overuse injuries the risk profile usually varies from sport to sport the periodic medical assessment it is routinely performed on athletes around the world every year and in some cases it is required by the regulatory bodies of the sport or even by law in particular nations some cases the pma is often referred to as ppe or pre participation physical evaluation however it is better performed at the end of the season where you have sufficient time for optimal treatment and rehabilitation if you pick up any injury or illness and you have time to work on correcting any risk factors which are identified objectives the objectives are to identify current illnesses injuries and chronic medical conditions 
to identify factors that increase risk of future injury or illness. We have to identify athletes with risk factors. We have to have a plan to follow up these risk factors. And the medical and coaching staff of the team must be involved in screening and follow up. The final step in the risk management process is to assess the risks to the team and the individual athlete. The injuries and illnesses to be targeted are identified from the risk matrix, the scientific literature, the team injury surveillance data from the past seasons. Once the season analysis has identified specific risk associated with the training and the competition program, finally, the specific injury and risk profile for the individual athlete is mapped through the periodic medical assessment. Based on this assessment, a prevention program which specifically targets these risks should be developed for the team and for the individual athlete. Generally, a targeted prevention program looks like this. Targeted exercises, warm-up, stretching, strengthening, balance and proprioception training, structured multimodal training programs targeting muscle strength and neuromuscular control, nutritional strategies to improve diet, hydration and recovery, technique modification to reduce the risk of injuries and to improve performance. Shoes and equipment modifications may be necessary and we should look at the load management of the athlete in collaboration with the strength and conditioning coach and the coaching staff. So what is our take home message? Sports injury prevention can be characterized as primary, secondary or tertiary. We have discussed a four-step program for injury prevention. We discussed something called the injury causation model. We discussed in detail about the risk management approach and development of an injury prevention program. We talked about the role of a periodic medical assessment versus a pre-participation physical evaluation. And we have seen the tailor-made targeted injury prevention programs have proved beneficial in reduction of sports injuries. These are the references which I have used to prepare this presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I strongly urge you to go through them in the interest of better understanding. I seem to have finished, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you and Jai Hind.